Okay, so this is SIG API. If everyone can put their names in the attendees, share the link um, in the chat. <clears throat> So for today, I have um, three topics on the agenda. The, the first thing, this is something we discussed last time, the network binding uh, plugin using the downward API for uh, propagating annotations and important information like uh, multis divide device info. So there are couple of things I wanted to um, clear out here. One <clears throat> is that, so the, the item, like the, the purpose of this, the, the purpose of this particular proposal is twofold. One is to have an additional uh, annotation on the word launcher pod, which is called kubeword.io slash device info. And second is to express a configuration option in kubeword spec, which configures the network plugin sidecar to have a volume mount expressed through downward API that consumes this annotation, kubeword.io slash device info, right? So I was wondering if we can, I was wondering if we can decouple both of them. So for example, having the annotation is one, um, one thing, having an API in the keyword spec that says mount this particular annotation on the pod spec in, in the sidecar as downward API is uh, a separate thing. There is value in decoupling that because say in the future, if you want um, a different annotation to be consumed by a different sidecar, a user can ex use the second mechanism that I expressed and they don't have to uh, target the first problem that this uh, proposal is solving. Do folks on the call have thoughts on this? Uh, but I think you're you're talking about allowing someone. Uh, f first of all, the configuration today is specific to a to a feature that's, that's the binding plugin feature. Mm -hmm. Like it's under the uh, uh, binding plugin, and the two things are decoupled in the sense that that you can express that you want a specific information to be processed uh, and pass from the pod from the pod uh, manifest to the pod runtime or to the to the application inside the pod through the download api by going to the to the plugin to the specific plugin and mentioning there that you that you want download api with a, with a specific uh, value, like uh, currently the value is device info, I think. So that translates to the virt controller knowing what to what information to collect and put and use that uh, annotation that we, it's like an implementation detail that it goes takes a specific information from the multi status, moves it to a internal annotation that we manage as the as covert. And that one is uh, passed into the sidecar. That's like uh, the implementation of that that request. Yep. Now, if some other feature wants something like this, then they are, they will do something like in their feature they will have a, a knob that will say I want also to pass some information, and that the VIR controller will have to interpret that and go and do do the same thing like uh, take the information from wherever it needs to take it put it in in the same annotation or a different annotation and make make it so they are not no so let me stop that, you here yeah. so one one assumption you are having is that every feature that needs some information in the sidecar will have to make a custom annotation or a custom label right 
already no. the word launcher pod has uh, many annotations and uh, metadata information that can be usable by side so it is not necessary that world controller has to put a, a annotation or label um, on the pod it could also be the case that the sidecar wants the information which is already available in the uh, annotation they just don't have a way to express it that uh, m volume mount this particular annotation as downward api for me I, maybe i i did understand it's like it's like you you want to express you want to express in a in a specific area uh, a knob that says i want you to do something like i want you to ex, uh, to pass some information to the that i want you to pass so now someone which is probably the virtual controller needs to interpret what that means if it needs to go to a, to some source of the, this information, be it a uh, notation, be it some parameter, be it some uh, third party CR, doesn't matter. It needs to fetch that information and then somehow pass this, pass the, the information uh, through some means. If that means is, for example, the VMI status, then it will do it in the VMI status. If that is through the Download the API, then it will do it through downer download the API, right? That's like is it yes, yes. No, okay that I agree with you, but the in this particular um proposal, we have um we have discussed that the downward API is a better option in passing the information than VMI status yes. because VMI status is shared across two pod instances during live migration. And there will be races in uh, accumulating that information and giving it to pod instances, correct? Right. So what I'm saying is that problem number one is word controller going in and fetching that particular information and putting it in the word launcher annotation, right? Now, along with the kubeword.io slash device info. There are already other annotation and labels that are available for sidecars to uh, consume. That controller does not have to do any work uh, to consume those information. It's just that in order to consume those annotation as downward API, th there is a piece missing in the kubeword spec, which allows configuration um, to the users saying that, okay, for my word launchers, use this as um, downward um, API volume mount. Oh, okay. let me let me try to understand what you're, you, so if I understand you correctly, you want a generic, a, a generic way. So the user, so the user that, con, or not the user, the admin that configures the Kubert CR, he will be able to express that for the, the sidecars, uh, this and this annotations, he wants to use it, he wants to use them as download API. This is what you are asking? Correct, yes. Okay. So but then, then we, are, we are not limiting the downward API to network binding sidecar. Yeah. All other uh, sidecar users who need this information and find the VMI status uh, uh, RACI can can take this particular configuration approach. Yeah, so the problem I think, that, okay, I understand now what you're saying. So I think that one is like very, it causes, first of all, I don't see how you can do that in a, in a generic way because the information of each feature has different things that it wants to do. Like you want to open another, a different configuration in the Kubert CR that maps this uh, this volume with uh, annotation that will work with downer API and, and what I found, I mean it could be done, right? I agree with you, but why should we give this uh, this flexibility? It sounds like you are opening a big uh, like a big uh, uh, how can I say it? it's like 
you are giving a lot of power to the admin to express whatever he wants uh, down and we will have to support all of these things that he wants. And instead of saying you have a feature or you have one way to pass information to the sidecar and that's it. You don't have many ways to do it. You only have one or, or maybe two ways to express this information. Why is that not better? This is what I don't understand. Because if tomorrow... Because, yeah, great. No, I mean, if tomorrow we will find out that it's not the best way to do it, like there is an alternative to pass the information between the pod manifest and the application inside the pod, maybe there is a better way that they will invent tomorrow. I want to change it. And I don't want the, not the admin and not the users to even know this happened. I just want them to... Uh, to continue working. I will use a different mechanism because it's an implementation detail. I will take care of backward and uh, compatibility and stuff like that, but I will change my method. I don't want them to have the opportunity to do this, uh, to have this flexibility to, to define uh, sidecars and have this uh, uh, hook point, I would say, like an integration point that it's so, so open that they can do, they can define it per their request. Because the reason is that I will have to, to always consider that for every time I'm doing something from now on, like not to break it or I don't know, all kind of weird things like that. So the question is, why do we need to express that? Uh, because, yeah, I can, I can take, try to answer that. So what we are doing here um, is that you have identified a need that there is um, a sidecar that has that wants to use certain kind of metadata and that is missing um, as a configuration option. So you're just implementing it for the particular use case which um, which the network sidecar um, need, right? There, there are other sidecars out there. Well, I don't know if there are, but I am imagining that there is a need for um for the the keyboard installation to say okay these are this is the metadata information that the sidecar um could potentially want and this pr is defining and implementing one protocol like that right um through one particular uh, configuration option now because that particular need is missing and this is very strongly scoped to the to the need let's say if we, we cannot generically advise this as a mechanism anytime anyone wants to add uh, an annotation that will come that will be used in their particular sidecar they will have to make a keyword change to support that yeah, but that's uh, that's that that's like um, it's like as I as I interpret it, okay, it's like saying I'm giving we have we are creating now a protocol a communication protocol between uh, to pass information between the pod, the pod manifest and the and the thing that runs inside the pod using the download API volume. Uh, we we are telling you that. If you want to to give someone some feature disability, like for example, you the exact exactly as you said now, if you want to tell to give the sidecar hook uh, options to say which annotation or which source of information it need, you wants to pass in into the into the pod uh, application inside the pod, then this is the way you should do it. I'm not giving you the option to create as many volumes as you want. I'm not doing that. I'm just giving you this. If you want to pass information down there, this is your protocol or this is your communication to do it. So, so the, the one who wants to add this feature that you are just saying, he will have to create an API for it, for the sidecar hooks. And he will he will use the communication that was that we built now or a new one, but that is generic. But the, this generic thing is not required now, like because what you are asking here is that it's not up to the feature to request that I want to pass this information. It requires the the configuration of this map in general, and Correct. then the feature can use it. 
Correct. Yeah, that that's right. And yeah. the reason why I'm thinking that is that sidecars are an extensibility mechanism of Kubeboard, right? For example, it's a limited one. Uh, limited. Yes, but it, it is the main purpose, as I understand, is for sidecar is to extend Kubeboard, where the core the the code of the sidecar does not have to leave in tree uh, in the cubeboard code base. Now, if we are recommending this approach, then any sidecar which needs um, metadata information has to have its specific code implemented in tree. He, he need, no, no, it doesn't need, a, no, it does not. He needs support from the core project to have a way to pass some information or to define some information to pass. So ex for example, if someone wants something uh, to expose something so generic as you said, then he needs to ask the core project to support it. And then the core project say, can say yes or no. In in uh, the case that we have now, we said the, the binding plugin needs it and we gave the example why it needs it. And there is no other option that we know it at the moment. So yes, we are providing the means. So for someone that creates a binding plugin to express that he wants this in, this specific information to go in, he, he cannot define whatever information will go in. He, he cannot say, I want any annot a specific annotation on the pod to get in. No, I'm not supporting that for you. I'm telling you what are we are supporting. We are supporting to pass only device info information and the way it does it, it's uh, from your, from, as you as the author of the plugin, is that you will see it on a specific volume that I'm telling you. You will see it there. But I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not giving you uh, an, an ex, ex, I mean, an ex, exposing you with doing whatever you want. No, you cannot do whatever you want. You can do only what I'm allowing you to do. And I think this is. This is fine. I mean, if you if you're convinced now of someone, like you can convince the community or the core maintainers to say, please allow any download API of any annotation with any volume to be expressed down into the sidecar, then that sounds like a, its own feature. It's like, yes, if you will have that one, then it's a generic feature and you will have to reason for it. <clears throat> but I don't think this is the situation now. <clears throat> the situation now is that I want I I'm giving you an option to how to that you can pass information, and I am giving as as a, as my like a specific feature can express that it wants and it needs to say uh, fixed number of options to to pass like it's up to the core project. I think this is the, maybe the part that we are not in sync here is that. There was no requirement or no one really wanted to pass any annotation with any volume as download API to the sidecar. It was very, very specific. Until now, it's actually only was only required by the, the networking and it was specifically for SRV. And now it got, got extended to not only SRV, but also VDPA and potentially yeah. other device-based uh, um, I don't know, device-based uh, information that needs to pass go down. So yeah. it, the requirement to do it generic uh, to do it in a generic way and expose it to the to the admin or uh, it, it didn't exist it and doesn't exist today. I mean it will be very hard to reason that it's needed. That's what I well I, I'm seeing other things coming up in the um <clears throat> in in the mailing list and and that do require annotation for um, for their sidecar, right? So the, the need one? for that is is coming up. And I was just wondering if we can um tackle this more generally because the part where you are implementing a a plugin through a sidecar so that the sidecar lives out of the repository and then some of that uh, the, some configuration of that sidecar needs support from core cubeboard. I I don't think that solution is 
achieving the need of having you know extensions that leave live out of the tree right so maybe just food for thought just an idea i'm not uh, based on what you are saying i think the there is a lot of concern on opening up this generic for for everyone so i think uh, that that is acceptable um that will be a lot of work and and we have to take a totally different approach there uh but just some food for thought that yeah. maybe the extensibility of what information goes into the sidecar is indeed um a requirement of the future okay so it's i think i think first of all i understood what you mean by generalizing this but i think the 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 needs are totally different like the the official the original need that triggered this thing was that we needed a way using the binding plugin api to 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 pass information that is needed for a network uh, devices that uh, that that use this device info like which is SRV and vdpa that was the need there was no need that someone came and said we need this uh, to open up this uh, to be able to do a downer epa uh, for any sidecar in general it's even i will i will say it's even um, the the sidecar hook that exists today the exposed sidecar hook api is not is not related to the binding plugins like the binding plugins are using the sidecars hooks protocol they are not using the api of the cider hooks it's i don't know if it's like clear like the cider hook if you want to put there a generic sidecar on your vm to do all kind of changes you will you have your you have a specific api for that mm -hmm. right it's yep. uh, there is there is an api for that. the it the network bindings are not using that api they are it's like it you define the network binding and that network binding in the background it really creates a sidecar and 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 integrates with the the virt launcher and everything but you will not see it on the on you will not see it exposed on the vmi spec it's like behind the scene is it did i do you understand what i mean it's like it does it it does it it uses the mechanism of the sidecar but it doesn't use the api of the the sidecar hooks from 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 the from how it is defined today and it it was intentional because we uh, for example in in when we look at the vent like down down downward not downward downstream uh, project like for example uh, um, what we use in Red Hat, then in Red Hat we do not support that hook, that uh, that um, sidecar hook at all. Like we are not exposing that, and the reason we are not exposing that is because that sidecar hook is pretty dangerous. Someone can put there something, any binary, they can define there a binary with like an image, and they can hack the the VM by that. So we are, it's not exposed. It's not something we are officially supporting. It's like a backdoor or something like that that will not really work on on a down on a down downstream uh, project. But I mean, it's that's the decision of the downstream project for that. But the API for the um, binding plugins for the network binding plugin that one is supported. So that one from from our point of view is it's like very tight it's like i'm defining what i want for the network binding and that will translate to something it will not be any uh, image it will be a specific image for the sidecar and so and so on. i hope you i hope i uh, yeah, made it makes uh, sense yeah so so yeah I, so what, my what, my yeah. my takeaway from this is that there is no need for other sidecars well at least currently there is no need to um, get the metadata expressed as um, downward API on other than network binding 
currently. So it makes sense for us to stick to this specific con uh, configuration in, in the network mining plugin uh, API in Qbot spec. Yeah, I, I by the way, I thought originally that you meant, and that was my, my I guess that was my mistake. I thought that you meant that the existing uh, annotation that we use, like I think it was named Network Info or something like that, that you, I thought you want that one to be generalized to anything, not only network, but to to whatever we want to push push there. And then it's really a generic communication channel, like yeah, uh, anyone can do put there anything in, in the sense of implementation, not in the sense of... Uh, of exposing it to, as an API, but in the sense that if someone will want to add to a sidecar something else totally different, he can do it through that channel. No, no, that's not what I was saying. What okay. I was saying is that downward API has a very limited options of what what many what metadata information can you mount as a volume on the uh, on the pod itself, right? And because we know that that is a limited set of information, we can configure kubeword spec to say uh, kubeword spec dot configuration dot uh, downward API, and then have multiple options there, right? One option yeah. is that annotation dot kubeword dot io slash device info, and that will take care of the networking sidecar configuration. And then other information is kubeword dot io slash uh, CPU information, kubeword.io slash, whatever the annotation that kubeword supports currently. So that yeah. any sidecar implementation that needs that metadata can have a way to tell the admin that, hey, admin, uh, configure the kubeword CR such that I have this information available as a volume. Yeah. I understand. So again, I think that I understand what you are saying. And I think if there will be, I think today there is no such need, but if, if that need will, will arrive, then we should probably change the, the, we'll have to, to change. I mean, if it will be expressed in a, in a through a different API, then I guess the, the binding plugins will use that API instead, maybe like, but I'm not just not seeing today the that need coming. I mean, it's pretty rare that something like that will be needed. At least this is what we saw until today. But if if it will happen, then we'll have to adjust, I guess. And and I don't think we okay. need to prematurely uh, do that now. But I don't see a problem if it will happen, like if it will just be needed later, like in when someone will ask for it then we will have it and then we will uh, will have to adjust the existing solution maybe it will use that one as well okay yeah that sounds good to me um in that case we'll have to make that networking binding plugin backward compatible but that's a, a story for a uh, future uh <clears throat> okay um i i think i have enough information here to put up a summary of this one more open question I had for this uh, network binding plugin is why why can we not reuse the um, existing multi uh, status annotation and we need to define our own uh, kubeword.io slash device info uh, annotation? I think I raised that question in uh, in the the PR and the answer seems to be related to uh, security where we are concerned that uh, not all of the information has to be exposed on the um, to the sidecar. I'm just curious what kind of security issues other information in that um, multis um, annotation causes security problems. I, I think it's it's more like uh, I will say the security is number two and number one is the the ability to control. The pro if you if we if we if we do if we download the API the whole uh, status Moodle status annotation right we are mm -hmm. we are saying that the virt launcher application that we not the virt sorry the sidecar application that someone created will depend on this Moodle status directly so it means that 
if Multus is adding something, changing something, or we find a problem and we need to mitigate it, we have no way to mitigate this problem at all. It's like it's out of our control. We expose, we gave the sidecar a direct exposure to that Multus thing. So okay. I yeah. think it's, so it's better to- Yeah, so as a prerequisite, Sorry? As a prerequisite to that question, I did some background um, hunting on how stable that Multus um, API is. And it looks like that information is uh, coming from Kubelet and it has not changed uh, for a while. So no, it's not um, coming from Kubelet, it's coming from Multus. Uh, you, mean, you mean the data that you have on the Multus status is. Yes. Is Add added by Multus CNI, like the Multus CNI is calling other CNIs. So whenever he jumps to call another CNI, in the end, it will put this information on the pod annotation himself. So the, it's the binary of the Multus CNI. Yeah, so my question is how often does that API change? Um, I don't know. I do, don't you, know. do you think that maintaining a separate annotation is worth uh, worth it to stop the exposure uh, to that information. Because my understanding was that that API has been pretty stable over the years and it does not change a lot. So I, I, I'm just saying that I can promise as someone that uh, supports this, let's say someone that supports this feature, I can promise to a sidecar uh, author I can promise him that it will keep working because it's under my control. So I will make sure that the information is there as, as much as I can. But I cannot assure him anything if he is directly uh, depending on Multus, uh, on Multus directly. I mean, I cannot assure anything. For example, they already had changed the annotation name. They I think it was network status and I mean, there yeah. was plural and then was singular and uh, uh, there were additions there that were made and so on. So I'm not saying that it, will, it may happen. I'm just saying that if we have something like that, we have control. So we have control to make sure that it is, like even if something goes wrong, we can still mitigate it and keep it working. And from a t in terms of security, I don't know if it's uh, relevant or not, but we can only pass the relevant information that we care. For example, we don't want to pass this download API to have a volume and so on for all the VMI pods. I want to have it only for the pods that have the need for it, which is the ones that use SROV or and now VDPA. For all the others, I don't expect them to have this at all. So it's like, it's under our control. We can control who gets it and we can control um, yeah. the information, what information that, 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 yes okay that's the, yeah. that's the main part the control part got it okay yeah i think we have uh beat this horse um enough i think um that answers all of my question i'm going to unhold uh put a summary of this discussion so that future um us can answer some of these questions if they come up again and then unhold the the design doc Thank you. First of all, I just I wanted to thank you uh, that you review it and make a lot of effort to look at this because it's uh, I find it very important that it will be we will manage to convince as much as as much people as possible. That's because this this is giving a chance to find problems and potential uh, potential issues. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Th thanks for bringing it here. Um. I think this was worth the the discussion that the time that went into the discussion. So, um. Okay. Going forward to the next topic. Um. Cluster wide CPU feature um disabling. I think um. Ed and I have been looking into this PR. Uh, but I just want to open it up for a discussion here. So just for filling everyone in on what is being proposed here. So there is a Kubert uh, spec configuration change proposed here that will allow the administrator to disable 
certain uh, CPU features. The way this will this is proposed to work is whenever there is some kind of uh, KMU or libvirt bug that um, that is requiring us to disable uh, CPU features in the domain uh, XML, then the admin will come here, configure this particular uh, section, and then whenever a VMI is created, if the VMI specifically does not ask to enable this feature, then by default, it will be uh, disabled. So with that background, um, there has been uh, some discussion going on. And some of the open questions right now are, the, so this seems like a templating, um, templating problem where we are creating uh, certain um, defaults in the kubebird spec that has to go into the VMI spec. And can we use other APIs like um, instant, instant types um, to, to create a template for us instead of re-engineering this in the kubebird spec? So I've been doing some thinking around this and I think the problem is a little bit different than, than what instance type uh, supports. So for example, if uh, a customer, well, if a keyboard installation has 20 instance type uh, definitions and the cluster admin wants to disable the CPU features for all of the VMs, then, then they have to first create a default uh, instance type um, that will apply for all VMs that do not work with those 20 and then change the uh, 20 instance types to all have this disable uh, template configured. So I'm not sure if instance types will be helpful here in disabling things uh, cluster-wide. We will have to have some um, configuration in, in the Kubert install itself. And I think what, what I'm recommending is that um, we use the same defaulting uh, API as present in the um, VMI spec, which is name, the name of the CPU feature and then enabled or disabled so that we can take the configuration from here and put it in the VMI spec directly um, if it is not present. And that way we have a record in the VMI object whether um, a particular CPU feature has been enabled or not. Um, I'm curious if folks on the call have thoughts regarding this. Lobo? Pardon me, I, <clears throat> I didn't catch it. Which um, one? I mean, the wall, because I was interrupted, so I had to uh, drop off for a bit. Uh, I think, uh, do you remember this uh, cluster? I mean, this cluster-wide CPU feature disablement, right? Yes, I do. So he, what uh, what was suggested here, what I suggested is what is marking now, is that in the to make it in a format that is very similar to what we have already in the VMI spec, when in allow it to be set as enable and disable, uh, so it will, uh, so it can be copied as is to the VMI. Like to, he suggested a different API, so it will look differently. So it will cover a generic way to to have this done. So is, is it like 
we are going to have the features like default features per uh, per CPU model, and then these are going to be applied on the VMI level. Yeah. So no. So this default feature will be part of the Qbert configuration, right? And so let's say if feature foo is disabled at cluster level, then you'll configure it like this. And this feature foo, if it is not present in the VMI spec, then it will be copied um, directly from here to the VMI spec. But on the cluster level, right? right? That's, that's your yes, proposal? This, this configuration is at the cluster level. And, okay. mm -hmm. and okay, I, got, the, I got it. Yeah, OK. Uh, so the problem, so the problem is that you want to have it a per CPU model, and the CPU model is not okay. known at a at the cluster level. It's only going to be known when you schedule the VM on on the node. Um, so you could, in theory, make the decision to add the feature into the VMI that is going to be sent to the launcher. Um, but I think that's just technically the technical difference from what the current proposed uh, implementation is, is doing. So the, that particular issue will will be present for this API as well, right? As in, even with this API, you don't know if this particular feature is available for a VM or not. Yeah, so only the handler can uh, send the appropriate uh, features uh, to the launcher. It's, I think, I think, uh, Ale, I think what he's saying is that only after the pod, after the VIT launcher is created, the pod is created, only when the VIT header starts processing it, only then, uh, and when when it will create the domain XML with the configuration itself, only then you will know what to do with this uh, information. Correct. You know, stable it or not. Correct. One caveat uh, is that I don't need the XML to be created. I just need to, uh, need to know on which which node the VM is going to run. I see. And so if we take the information. Uh, from the API and put it in the VMI, then it will affect uh, scheduling. Yes, correct. But, well, um, let me take back uh, this. Uh, so if you put it into the VMI, you so you cannot have the API where you have pair uh, model features which might be problematic because only on few models you might want to disable some kind of feature. Right. Right. So how does this particular uh, API in the VMI spec support that? A per model enabling or disabling, do you know? Uh, um, so currently, um, it's more about enabling the feature, not disabling it. Uh, as you may, yeah. Yeah, although um, the API shows that it's supposed to be supporting also disabling, but yes, this is exact, what, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's lying yes. to us. Uh, well, no, because um, like, first of all, I'm probably not happy that it has so many options. <laughs> But second of all, if you say, OK, disable it, and you land on a node where the model doesn't have the feature, then it's all right, because it's going to be just ignored. Uh, so pretty much all the time, it's going to be true. But, yeah. but the difference between what we are discussing is this, that you want some features to be uh, disabled only per some model. Like I could, okay. yeah, I could imagine. I could imagine we would extend this struct with, uh, if this is the, if this is CPU model A, please disable this feature. Otherwise, 
don't take it into account, right? But um, no, it's like you are important. you are saying that in general you could add to this feature, uh, CPU feature. You can also say to which model it relates to. Yes, yes. But and if again, you add that field, it will work. Yes, exactly. But you shift the the responsibility a little bit. Because no, you don't shift it. It just uh, you expose it at the VMI level, at the VMI or VM level, and you still want the cluster, the cluster ah, okay. level uh, control. Yes, yes, that that could work. That's a possibility. Yeah, I mean we can. So, what I would propose maybe uh, set the ground is let's come up with a proposal. Uh, I don't think we are in rush for this PR. Because we still have the like release is going to be in in two months or something like that. Let me check it. Release <clears throat> one point three. It's a month, I think. Yeah. So branching is on twelfth. Uh, what is this? June. So yeah, we have two months. Two months. Yeah, two months. So I think the like. Probably the best way is to have a proposal, outline the the possible approaches, outline why they don't fit the the scenario, and maybe this option which we actually um, described right now could be one of the options as well. Sure. Um, Bilbo, do you want to put this uh, comment that? these are the changes that are needed for this to work and let's have um, a proposal going for this i don't mind uh, on the pr so we can we can make forward progress yeah i don't mind that okay awesome <clears throat> but it's i think uh, uh, one point was missed here that uh, there was not even an agreement to have a proposal <laughs> it's like so I don't know how to, how can we do what you just said? Um, I think we can get a quorum. Okay. If you, if you agree, right? No, I, I, I mean, the whole point of a proposal or for a design proposal was to have ability to, to add, to add alternatives. So it can, they can be, they can be considered and discussed, but uh, I was in the impression it is, it needs to be finished quickly and not, uh, we don't have time, but if you are saying it can be done, and who, who will do it? That's also another question. Uh, can't say right now, but uh, I hope we are going to find somebody. I mean, like generally, I would assume if you are um, proposing an API, you did the due diligence and uh, thought about other options as well. What we don't do right now is just don't we don't put it in on the paper, right? Or into the proposal. So it's I think mostly the proposals are uh, formality. Okay, let's I okay, let's let's take it offline and see if we can be done. I, it's a question mark. But... Yeah, I I think at least with SIG API the the way proposal are are seen is changing like we are here taking much more effort of uh, putting in you know thoughts discussions and uh, alternatives into the proposal than you know what i have seen so maybe you know when you guys discuss um, consider that as also something that that is changing with that feature life cycle proposal going forward. OK, um, the next thing uh, let me put down here.
uh, the next on the uh, discussion topic is um, shadow node. Uh, I just want to briefly uh, mention here that <clears throat> the shadow node API change proposal has um, has been reworked with uh, an alternative solution of using um, some of the new features in Kubernetes. Kubernetes, excuse me. Um, so I just encourage everyone who has been um, looking and throwing ideas at, at this uh, proposal to go in and, and take a look at it uh, again. Uh, maybe for for the next call, uh, Lugo, if you, you can give an overview of, of the new features that we are going to um, use, um, validating and admission policy, um, that, that will help um, everyone who is listening in on the call. Yes, we can do it, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Um, Michael, Mike? I, I yeah, think um, we have. I don't next... think we have a lot of time for this, so maybe next week or whenever in the next meeting we can pick it up. Yeah, sure. Um, if you just want to give like a brief intro or background context for this. Um, yeah, sure. Few... Um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, VMs can have data volume templates. Um, and the way that the behavior works now is you create a VM, the VM can be stopped, just whatever, just whenever you put, right after you post a VM manifest, regardless of um, the desired state of the VM, uh, we will basically immediately create the data volumes and start populating them. Um, I think that that is not ideal. Um, and, I think it would be better to, well, it is what it is, you know, it's been the way that way for five years, but um, I, I think it would be better to wait for the VM to start before actually creating any data volumes. Um, that's like more consistent with how like stateful set works. Um, yeah. And the reason this is coming up is because a backup partner um, and their backup and restore solution, they want to be able to um, replace the uh, disks, like, you know, the the PVCs uh, for your VM from a backup. And it is tough to do that, um, given the way things are now, because if they delete the PVCs or data volumes, our vert controller will initially start creating them again. So it's like, it's impossible for them to replace the the disks without deleting the VM itself, which is something they don't want to do because that could trigger all sorts of other things if there are owner references or, or or other things going on in the system. So yeah, I want to introduce this behavior to uh, kind of delay um, creating data volumes for VMs until the VM is started. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks for the um, context. Um, we can have this discussion scheduled for the next call. Okay. Perfect. So better do it, uh, replace it first, and that's it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that concludes um, everything I had. Um, we have a couple of topics for the next call. We can we can take it then. All right. Uh, thanks, folks, for for joining. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.